I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another live edition of the Chronicles of Aguna podcast. Brought to you by the 90 Min Football Network. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simiu. And on this edition, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to share with you guys uh, some of the interviews I was able to grab down at the London Football Awards last night. A clean sweep for the Gunners. Mikel Arteta won the best manager. Martin Odegaard won the best player. Bukayo Saka won the best young player. And Aaron Ramsdale won the best goalkeeper. And it's only right. It's only fair, uh, given what a cracking season Arsenal have had so far. I had the pleasure of speaking to a number of former footballers, um, not just Arsenal footballers, but um, I'm going to share with you guys the Arsenal interviews because those are the ones that you'll obviously be interested in. So coming up on this edition of the podcast, you'll be hearing from Frank McClintock. Arsenal legend. You'll be hearing from David Seaman, who was a guest on the podcast not so long ago, but I can tell you he's much, much bigger in real life. And of course, Arsenal sporting director Edu, who wasn't on the list to be interviewed, but was kind enough to stop and give me some of his time as well. Uh, so we'll be doing all of that on this edition. Uh, big hello to everybody joining us live. Temi says, is this a premiere? Uh, it's not. It is live. And then I'm just going to chop the videos in. Uh, I'm going to try this for the first time. So if it goes a little bit bad, uh, that's why. If you're listening on audio, you won't be able to see me. But of course, you'll be able to listen in uh, to all of the interviews as well. Uh, Tom says, good seeing your little feature on AFTV. What feature? What did I do on AFTV? I was standing next to the guys uh, from AFTV yesterday. Was it when they asked me a question? I wasn't sure if that was filming or not. Uh, but yeah, um, brilliant stuff. Um Great interviews, great night, great night for the Arsenal. Um, you know, it was just, I, I just want to start off by saying this because I've seen a lot of people on social media sort of mocking Arsenal fans and, and saying, oh my God, um, you know, why are people getting excited about the London Football Awards? What are the London Football Awards? What do they mean? The truth is the London Football Awards are something that was designed and that was set up in order to raise money for the Willow Foundation, which is... Um, an amazing charity headed up by Bob Wilson and his missus. Um, of course, uh, huge um, figures around the Arsenal world, uh, particularly the older supporters will obviously have fond memories of those uh, times in which Bob Wilson featured for the club. But he's always been a, a kind of ever present, hasn't he? A, an Arsenal legend, there's no doubt about that. And he's done some unbelievable charity work. So the London Football Awards um, were created and were set up so that uh, they could raise money to help young adults with terminal illnesses. So if you're sitting there and you're saying, oh, my God, what are the London Football Awards? Why does this even matter? Um, what does it mean? As some people have been online, go and read up on it. Um, you know, not everybody will know that. And so I'm not going to sort of throw mud at anybody who said that because, you know, having covered the event for the first time, I found out, you know, I, I got to kind of, dive into it a little bit more, understand a little bit more uh, about what it's all about. And, and I probably wouldn't have known that uh, without looking into it. So I'm not throwing mud at anybody that was kind of driving that narrative or, or was saying that type of thing. I would just say that, you know, go and have a look into it because it is a, a fantastic thing for a fantastic cause. Mikel Arteta was there, Bukayo Saka, Martin Odegaard, Leah Williamson was there, Alex Scott was there. There were some amazing um, people there. And, um, yeah, good to see them all in the flesh. And thank you, of course, to those uh, who uh, who stopped uh, to have a quick word. Uh, let's share with you guys then some of the interviews. This is going to be a, a shorter edition of the podcast, uh, but I wanted to share with the, uh, these with you guys as soon as possible. So we'll start off with former Arsenal hero Frank McClintock. What an absolute gent. Here he is talking to me on the red carpet at the London Football Awards. Uh, Mr. Frank McClintock. Uh, Frank, I mean, what a season it's been for Arsenal so far. Um, you've won titles with Arsenal. You've, you've been to the very end. What's required from Arsenal at this stage of the season now to make sure they get over the line? Well, I think they're going very close as it is. And the only team that's probably going to uh, frighten them a little bit is Man City. Uh, but uh, they're not playing quite as well, I don't think, as they did the year before. 
But Arsenal, are, I mean, the, the way they played the other day there against Fulham was superb. The first 45 minutes was wonderful football. And the players that they're buying in are doing good as well. So um, I'm, I'm really chuffed to them. I, I didn't know how they would be before the season started. but uh, And then when they get beat, was it 3-1 with Man, Man United? Was it 3-1? Yeah. I think it was. And uh, I thought maybe this will show them that they'll get beat a few other games. But they went on about nine games after that without getting beat. So... Um, <clears throat> I think they've done terrific and uh, I think they've got a very good chance of winning. Won't be, won't be dead on, but because Man, C- Man City are a good side as well. Well, have you made it the culture that Mikel Arteta's created? Because for a while there was talk that it had gone a little bit soft at Arsenal. But Mikel Arteta's come in and he's completely changed that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the players all look as though they're... The way they pass the ball now, it's one and two touch football all the time. Yeah, I mean, there's very few people... You don't get wingers now taking people on, beating two, three players. It's all one, two touch, and the ball goes from side to side, and it's, uh, it's good to watch. And I thought, especially with the pressure that they're coming under, because they've only got about 10 or 11 games left, and yet you look at them at the weekend there, and they were superb, especially the first 45 minutes. They were absolutely superb. <laughs> I, I hope they can keep that up. If you speak to Arsenal fans now, they'll probably tell you there's a number of contenders for Arsenal's player of the yeah. season. Who stood out the most for you? Well, that's a hard one, that, because there have been that many good players. The midfield player, I can't ever remember his bloody name in midfield. Martin Odegaard? Ma- yeah, uh, he's been superb, actually. In fact... I think he's improved as a player. Maybe he got more and more confident each time he played. And he's just got better and better. And he's uh, he's scored good goals, 10, 11 goals and things like that, you know. I think he's been outstanding. But there's been a lot of very good players, actually, you know. So a difficult one. Now. So are Arsenal going to do it? Are they going to get over the line and be crowned Premier League champions? I'm, I'm hoping very much that they will do. Um, we'll just keep our fingers crossed because... The other team that's after us will be pushing us all the way. You can guarantee that. It won't be winning by three or four points and that. I think it'll be maybe by one point, maybe, you know. Brilliant. Frank, thank you so much. Okay. Really Pleasure. appreciate it. That was the legendary Frank McClintock. Before someone says about my attire, um, before somebody points that out, yes, I was just wearing a black jumper and jeans because... I was told that I'd be interviewing people outside on the red carpet. That was my assignment last night. And so uh, I thought I was going to be standing outside in the wind, in the rain, uh, potentially under a shelter, but certainly uh, exposed to the elements like the wind. And I thought, well, there's no need to dress up because I'm not going into the actual awards ceremony and I'm going to be outside. So I need to be warm. I need to be comfortable. But yeah. When they all came in suited and booted, I was a little bit like, well, maybe I should have made a little bit more effort. Uh, A few hellos to people in the live chat before we move on. Uh, A big hello uh, to Tom, to Robert, um, to Richie, um, to uh, Sam, who says, good to see you, H. Uh, Sam was down there filming some fantastic content as well. Good to see you in person, mate. He says, uh, great to see Edu in great form. Real, recognized, real. (laughs) Love that. Uh, Love that. Right. Uh, Let's move on, uh, because I'm sure you guys would rather hear from this man than me. I also caught up with uh, former Gunners hero, um, old safe hands himself, David Seaman. Here's what he had to say on the red carpet last night. Legend David Seaman. Um, David, it's been a fantastic season for Arsenal so far. Um, How confident are you that the Gunners can get over the line? Um... Yeah, it has been a fantastic season and it, and it will be even if it doesn't go turn out right. It'll still be a great season because it's an improvement on last season. But, you know, am I confident? Yeah. You know, because we've got we've got points in hand. We can lose a game. Next time City play, there could be eight points clear. You know, so that is a lot of points to try and make up. But it's Man City, you know, so you never... You're never fully confident. You've been on the training ground recently with the likes of Aaron Ramsdale and, and the rest of the guys. What have you noticed in terms of like the mood around the place and the culture that Mikel has built? The confidence and the togetherness. You, know, you see it on Saturday as well. You see it when they play, when they score, they're all together. And that's the biggest thing that he's done. Mikel's got everyone together, including the fans as well. You, you see the atmosphere now at the Emirates and it's special. You know, and that's what he's that's what he's created. As a former player that was there in sort of the glory days, one of my childhood heroes. Um, 
I mean, you must be delighted to see that that kind of fight has come back at Arsenal because it did disappear for a little bit. Yeah, it did. You know, we, we, it, it did go. You know, because like, <laughs> even this season when we've, we've got a, a goal down or even two goals down, season ago we would have had it and really lost it but now we still stick to our game and we still we, we, we stick to our game plan and it works you know they know it works so they're sticking to it there's definitely a number of contenders but in terms of Arsenal's player of the season so far if you were handing out the awards oh, who's it going to Arsenal player of the season well you've got to look at Saka you've got to look at Aaron you know Saliba as well you know who knew how good he was going to be you know so there's three there that are really up for contention can you give us one <laughs> No, because <laughs> his season's not over yet. <laughs> nice one, David. Thank you so much. Cheers. Good to see you. So David Seaman can't decide on who his player of the season so far is. Fair enough. There are a fair few candidates, to be fair to him. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll let him off on that one. Uh, as Ruse says... Um, Harry, you better buy a good suit for such events. Yeah, but I, I didn't think I was going to be doing that. Um, I've got plenty of suits. They're all just gathering dust in the in the wardrobe. That's the problem. Uh, big hello to Kassirye, who joins us from Uganda as well, and to Steve, who says, hit the likes, people. Harry needs to buy a jacket and tie. Yeah, love it. Good one. Uh, make sure you do hit the likes, though. Um, on your way in, on your way out. Um, and, and of course, let us know your thoughts if you're watching this back later on in the comment section below. Uh, finally, I got to catch up with Edu very, very briefly. Um, as I say, Edu wasn't going to stop. Edu stopped uh, specifically um, to, to have a word, which was amazing. Um, so a massive, massive thank you to him. Such a warm character. Um, and as you'll see in this video that I'm about to show you, uh, once everybody else kind of got wind of the fact that actually Edu would stop, they all started circling. <laughs> and then uh, there was a number of interviews to come off the back of that. But here's what Edu told me uh, exclusively uh, ahead of the award ceremony kicking off. It's been a fantastic season for Arsenal so far. Um, t tell us a little bit about the mood behind the scenes at the moment. Well, I think we're sure... Uh, where we are, isn't it? And the way we we playing, the way we're behaving, the way we are performing, is our team. Uh, you see how how the players are enjoying to be together. So you see Mikel as well, how happy he is as well with the team. So that's 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 us. That's the way we are. At the start of the season, a lot of people looking at Arsenal from the outside in would have had lesser expectations. The team has really performed. Was there a feeling within the club that this team was ready to push for the Premier League title? Well. Um, if you see how we started um, all the process and our um, uh, objectives and our ideas in terms of where we would like to be, so we being re very clear uh, about um, our ambition, uh, we were very clear also um, to the plan what we put in place already, and uh, yeah, and then we started to do what we really planned and. I think it started to happen the way we really expected and uh, we why not dream what we've been dreaming for for a long time that was the brilliant edu talking uh, to me um yeah i mean look you can see in that video can't you that i wasn't the only one that was in a jumper etc etc but um yeah those were the uh main ones uh we did speak to a couple of other people not arsenal related i didn't think that you guys here uh, would necessarily be interested in those uh, but you will be able to find all of that content on the 90 min channels over the coming days um, I told you guys that it was going to be a brief episode today it is a brief one we'll be back tomorrow of course uh, to look ahead to the game against Sporting Lisbon once we've got a bit of team news uh, and a press conference to kind of go by so we'll bring you all of that uh, live on the podcast tomorrow so looking forward to that in the meantime leave a like subscribe uh, share this around you know the drill by now and uh, we'll be back very very soon with more arsenal content until next time take care of yourselves and stay safe thank you i'm martin tyler and you're listening to harry Simeon. <laughs>